In case you weren't aware, in the midst of the massive amounts of information flowing around between COVID and the election in the United States, there is chaos going on outside of our borders. There is, in fact, a civil war brewing in Ethiopia between the ruling party, or the Ethiopian government, and the Tigray ethnic group. What makes this issue difficult to discuss is that there is very little information on what's actually going down on the ground. Journalists have had difficulty actually getting on the ground and gathering proper information because of how everything has been shut down. This issue is close to my heart because it not only means the death of massive amounts of people on all sides, but also because it threatens to involve Eritrea in another war, unnecessary war, amongst the many unnecessary wars we've had. And I'll get into how that might happen, how it's already started to happen in a second. Even though it's been difficult to get factual information on this from the inside, we've had to rely on trusted sources like the Associated Press or Reuters. So that's where I'm basing a lot of my information on, as well as Twitter. <laughs> Twitter has been a source of misinformation, but also information that has been uh, corroborated by multiple sources. And so here's what's been confirmed so far and a little bit of a timeline of what's been happening. I will link a source that has a more detailed timeline below if you want to read more. So on Wednesday, November 4th, the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi or the Ethiopian government sent troops to respond to a Tigray attack on a military base in the Tigray region. At this point, communication started to get cut off. Phone and internet services have been completely cut off. Um, and just to give you some context, in the past, during regional conflicts, the Ethiopian government claimed the re their reason for cutting off communication like they have now uh, and like they have done in those previous regional conflict was to reduce the spread of violent messaging and therefore in turn to reduce the violence um, in general by minimizing the amount of communication that was going on. But for this conflict specifically, the Ethiopian government has not given a reason as to why they've cut off communication. Therefore, it's making it difficult for journalists to actually report on what's going on and on the conditions and the people. On Tuesday, Abi deployed troops from the entire country and he began airstrikes against the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF. And on Friday, there was reports that he continued to cut off the Tigray region from the rest of the country. On Saturday, there were reports that Tigray, the TPLF, fired missiles at Eritrea's capital, Asmara, claiming the reason for their attack was that Eritrea attacked first at the request of the Ethiopian government. Again, none of this has been confirmed since the Eritrean government has been silent and secretive as it has been thanks to the dictator, Isaya Saforki, who has ruled the country since 1991, since Eritrea got its independence. From family I have back home in Asmara, these are confirmed. Um, Tigray has fired missiles at the capital city, Asmara. But as to whether they were responding to an attack from Eritrea is unclear. On Monday, there, there was confirmation that the, the TPLF has continued to fire missiles in villages like Sanafe. It's not known whether there's any casualties yet. So why did this all start? Um, so that's what we know so far about the, the, the conflict, the, the war that's going on right now. Uh, so there's a complex history here. So I would suggest you read about it in the source I'm going to link below that goes into much more detail. But just to summarize the recent events that led up to this current conflict, Ethiopia, the Ethiopian government, was supposed to hold elections across 10 different regions this summer. A majority of these regions are ruled by ethnic groups. Uh, Tigray, as one of the largest ethnic groups, has always pressed for autonomy of these regions, including itself. Abi, however, the Prime Minister, uh, ever since he came to power in 2018, always aimed for centralized government or centralized control. So with these tensions already escalating since he came to office, Tigray opposed his decision to delay those elections that were supposed to happen in the summer. 
his reasoning was, and the reasoning of the Ethiopian government was that the, because of the pandemic, we're going to have to delay these elections that were supposed to be held in the summer. So in opposition to that, uh, Tigray, uh, they went ahead with their elections in September, and Abi basically said it was unconstitutional for them to do so, and started to taking action to marginalize them from the rest of the country starting in September. And this marginalization is what has led to the declaration of war, I guess you could say. Uh, both sides are blaming each other for starting the war, basically. So some important things to consider here as to the consequences of this only 15-year-old, 15-day-old war is displacement and casualties. Uh, there are currently 2 million people in the region cut off from humanitarian aid. There are four camps hosting 94,000 refugees in Tigray. They are currently reported to be okay since the fighting is concentrated in the west uh, near the border with Sudan and Eritrea. Um, these four camps have been more east of the Tigray region. Um, and But with that in mind, with you know where this conflict is headed, Sudan is bracing for up to 200,000 Ethiopian refugees fleeing from that hot zone right now. Uh, so far, 25,000 have already um, headed that way, have already entered Sudan in fear uh, of the war, and, and basically they are starving, no food, because they've been cut off from the aid that they need. In terms of deaths, there were some sources reporting that 500 troops have died already. However, there's fear that there's an underestimation considering the fact that we're cut off. Communication is completely cut off. Um, and I'm going to urge you to read the article I'm going to post below um, of first witness accounts that the Associated Press has been able to confirm on what's going on on the ground, specifically dealing with killings. Um, and Amnesty International has confirmed accounts of civilians being hacked to death in the Tigray region. So a lot of us in the diaspora are, are feeling powerless at this point, especially considering the fact that the Ethiopian government has ignored pleas from the entire world to put a cease to this. Um, the war could be the beginning of conflicts internally between the Ethiopian government and the various ethnic groups within Ethiopia. It could also lead to conflicts between Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, Egypt, who have already been tense in the past few years. Um, with Eritrea, more than a few years. People not, might not want to believe it, but the people in power are not looking, looking out for the interest of the people. If they were, they would have found other ways to work out their disputes. It's a shame Abiy has decided to go to war with his own citizens. It's a shame the Eritrean president now has a reason to continue mandatory military servitude. I think he's happy on the inside that we're, we're potentially going to enter another war. What can he do to help? Um, in the absence of communication in the region, social media has been the main way for people to gather evidence and check in on their families, frankly. Citizens in these countries and the diaspora from all sides have been asking to an end to this war. I ask you to stay informed, gather facts, share with others so that the rest of the world continues to put pressure on the Ethiopian government, the TPLF, and the Eritrean government to think about the suffering they're causing. Take to Twitter and spread the message. Start by changing your profile picture to the picture I'm going to be posting below and on my Twitter account to show opposition to this war. And use hashtags like the ones I'm going to link below to show your opposition. Find local organizations who might already be writing to their state leaders to speak on um, to speak on the behalf of the diaspora. I will be updating or adding any information I have on what the local Eritrean diaspora in Chicago is going to be doing in asking their senators um, and writing letters to their senators to speak on our behalf to the rest of the world and to the Ethiopian government. So I'll update you. Uh, throughout the rest of the week. Uh, but in the meantime, take to Twitter and spread the message. Share this video, spread the message. Make videos of your own and spread the message. Okay, thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.